Hello! Welcome back to our series of e-lectures about the history of English. In the following, we will discuss the sound inventory of early modern English, indicating the type of sound changes that led from Middle English to Early Modern English and beyond, illustrating the pronunciation of Early Modern English using audio examples in each case. We will proceed as follows. First of all, we will look at the transition from Middle English to Early Modern English, pointing out the major sound changes. Then we will list the Early Modern English phonemes in particular and will eventually exemplify the sounds of Early Modern English by means of a passage from William Shakespeare. Let us first of all look at the Early Modern English period itself. It began around 1500 and ended around 1700. So let's write these two dates down here. 1500 to 1700. Its beginning coincides with the ascendancy of Henry VIII to the throne in 1509. Further socio-cultural milestones that define the early modern English period are the invention of printing, the introduction of the printing press to England in 1476 by William Caxton. This helped to fix the literary language of England in the 16th century. Another milestone is the gradual break from Rome by Henry VIII, which led to a high deg higher degree of independence of the English language from other languages. And the end of the early modern English period coincides with the age of exploration and colonization and the beginning of the scientific age at around 1700. And then there is of course most influentially the works of William Shakespeare. Shakespeare published his works in the late 16th and the early 17th century. For this reason and for the degree of influence he exerted on the English language, early modern English is often alternatively referred to as Shakespearean English. The transition from Middle English to Early Modern English was marked by a major change in the pronunciation of the vowels from about 1350 to 1550 and beyond eventually to 1700. This change, termed the Great Vowel Shift, consisted of a shift in the articulation of almost all vowels, most distinctively, however, the long monophthongs. The consonantal system remained almost unchanged. Well, this is what happened. Five of the seven Middle English monophthongs were raised and two of them were diphthongized. Well, this simplified animation from the Virtual Linguistics Campus illustrates the changes that took place. So, let's start in 1350. And you see this is a typical chain shift that raised the five of the seven monothongs and diphthongized two of them, the ones in the center. Apart from the great vowel shift, early modern English saw no sweeping systematic changes in the Middle English vowels. Nevertheless, all short vowels were somehow involved in some changes. The following major changes took place in the system of monophthongs. Now here's the first one. The loss of schwa in final unstressed positions. So typical examples are words such as mark for example, marker became mark, or smother became smooth and later smooth. Here is another change. The 
change or the fronting of back A to front A before voiceless fricatives. For example, in words such as staff, which became staff, and class, which became class. This reminds us of American English, doesn't it? The third change I want to be discuss is the centering of a mid-high vowel to schwa. So this affected examples such as run, which became run, and mud, which became mud. A fourth monophthongal change can be found before nasals, where the mid-low front vowel changed to a mid-high front vowel. So here we have examples um, such as wing and single, where the vowel was lower before this change. And the final monophthongal change I want to discuss is the raising of O to O in words such as bolt or bold or cold. So these are some central monophthongal changes that led from Middle English to Early Modern English. Further changes that marked this transition affected the system of diphthong. So let's look at these in detail. So the diphthong EU changed to EU, so the onset was lowered slightly. And an example would be words such as pure, which became pure or words such as pew became pew. A second change is a type of monophthongization where the diphthong au changed to o. So typical examples are words such as cows which became cause or another example would be hawk which became hawk. The next change is another monophthongization process where the diphthong O as in no was monophthongized to no or blow became blow. Well and last but not least we have the change of A to E again a monophthongization which affected words such as Dai, which became de, or rise, which became raise. So much for the vocalic changes that mark the transition from Middle English to Early Modern English. The changes in the consonantal system during the Early Modern English period were relatively small. There were only slight readjustments in the system of consonants. The following major changes took place. And again, let's look at them in detail. So here's the first one where we had two new phonemes in words such as sing, for example, sing or pleasure. So here are two new phonemes which are pronounced in the present day English way. Another change was the loss of the two allophones of the glottal fricatives, uh, the allophones ch and ch. So you could argue the last remaining typical German allophones that we still have in German. So words such as sicht became sit or taucht became eventually caught. Another loss affected the alveolar lateral where now words such as former half became half or to take another example talk became talk and later on talk. Then we could observe a loss of k and g before uh, final nasal, so for example in um, typical comparatives or words such as long, which were formally pronounced long. 
and changes that occurred in the 18th century were the remaining two. First of all, the um, labiovelar approximant was dropped before an alveolar approximant, before R, so words, words such as wrong became wrong or wrinkle became wrinkle. Well, and the last change affected the degree of roticity, which became lower and lower as English developed towards present-day English. So in the 18th century, the post-vocalic R was lost in words such as march, march became march, or quarter became quarter. So this is an overview of the main changes that mark the transition from Middle English to Early Modern English. Let's now look at the Early Modern English phonemes in detail. Early Modern English had 11 monophthongs, 3 diphthongs and 24 consonants. Well, here they are. Let's start with the monophthongs. During the early modern English period and before, the vowel system of English changed considerably. Whereas the short vowels experienced a number of fine adjustments, the major activity concerned the long vowels. As a result of these changes, length was no longer a distinctive feature of the English vowels. Here are the five long monophthongs. So we have five monophthongs. Green. A mid-high long vowel, e as in mate, e mid-low as in mac, then a mid-high back vowel, o as in goat, and finally a high back vowel, u as in food. Let's continue with the system of the short monophthongs. Now, here are the five short monophthongs and one central monophthong. So again, let's look at them in detail. We have a mid-high front vowel, i, as in kiss. A mid-vowel, mid-front vowel, e, as in bed. A low front vowel, a, as in that. A low back vowel, o, as in hop. A mid-high back vowel, a mid-high back vowel, u, as in full, and finally the central vowel, which occurred in unstressed position. So the whole monophthongal system was no longer a congruent pattern. So further sound changes were likely to occur after the transitional state of early modern English. Early modern English only had three diphthongs. They were all upgliding, or if you wish closing, that is their final element was a high vowel. Centering diphthongs with schwa as the final element did not occur in early modern English. The reason is quite simple. Words such as here, there, sure, did not exhibit a centering diphthong since R was always pronounced during this period, coming out as here, there or sure. So here are the diphthongs of early modern English. A as in tide, O as in house, and I as in joy. Okay, so this is the diphthongal system. The consonantal system of early modern English was almost that of Middle English. The only system-wide change between the consonants of Middle English and Early Modern English is the loss of the allophonic variants of the glottal fricative, so there are no longer any particular allophones of this phoneme, and the addition of j, that is a post-alveolar fricative, to the system. Most spelling patterns 
were formulated in their essential details during late Middle English and early, early Modern English. By the end of the 17th century, the principle of a fixed spelling for every word was firmly established for printed works and over the course of the following century, personal spelling followed suit. So by the end of the 17th century, modern patterns of spelling and punctuation had been established. Literature flourished in England during the Renaissance. Several names such as Edmund Spencer, Thomas More or Christopher Marlowe are connected with that period. But no one had such a great impact on both literature and language as William Shakespeare, who is depicted over here, who lived from 1564 until 1616. He is a unique figure of world literature and his plays and poetry are full of rich language. He invented numerous new words and is thus so important for the English language. In his works he deals with every facet of human existence. So let's finally illustrate the sounds of early modern English using, using an example from Shakespeare. Well, I chose one of his famous sonnets, sonnet number 18. Okay, here we are. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day, Thou art more lovely and more temperate? Roof winds do shake the darling buds of May, And summer's lays hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, And often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shed, when in eternal lanes to tame thou growest. So long as man can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Well, this may suffice as an impression of what early modern English could have sounded like. Let us summarize. During the early modern English period, the sound system of early modern English had reached a state very similar to that of present day English. Whereas the consonantal system, apart from some allophonic changes, remained relatively stable, the system of vowels had changed dramatically due to the effects of the great vowel shift. So at the end of the early modern English period, the vowel system was almost like it is today. However, the orthography did not follow this change. Thus, we have a very peculiar situation today. A sound system that is completely different from that of earlier periods such as Old or Middle English and an orthographical system that does not reflect the new pronunciation. Rather, it represents the pronunciation of English of several centuries ago. Thank you for listening.